Here for a reaction, former national security advisor for President Trump, Robert O'Brien. Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, there's a lot going on in the world stage, um, but this idea that we can do something tough to Russia. Um, look, Joe Biden can't even protect our southern border. What makes him what makes the world think that he's going to protect Taiwan and protect Ukraine? I mean, he can't even protect Texas. Well, it's great to be with you, Jason. Early Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you and the viewers. Uh, look, we know what works in international affairs. It was the Ronald Reagan doctrine of peace through strength, and that was the doctrine that President Trump employed. And when we look weak, when America looks weak to our, our adversaries, whether it's uh, China attempting to rebuild uh, its empire, Russia trying to recapture the Soviet empire, Iran uh, trying to reinstitute the old Persian empire, when they look at us and, and we look weak, that's provocative. And so uh, we, we need to make sure that we, we, we end that, that appearance. And it's not just the, 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 the foreign policy white papers. It's the fact that inflation is running rampant. It's the fact that when President Trump left office, oil was roughly $30 a barrel, and it's on its way to $100 a barrel. And we were energy independent. It's the fact that we canceled the Keystone Pipeline. As you mentioned, it's the fact that the southern border is totally out of control. It's the debacle that occurred with the evacuation of, of Afghanistan. So our adversaries look at all those things uh, beyond what's just in the, the foreign policy white papers, which, which may not be terrible. Uh, and and they, they smell weakness, and that's provocative, and that, that, that's the sort of thing that could end up, end up you know, pulling us into some sort of conflict, and we have to be extraordinarily careful. You know, usually an administration will have a knee-jerk reaction to something happening on the international stage by saying, oh, there's going to be sanctions. But, I mean, how many hundreds of times can we say sanctions, sanctions, sanctions against Russia? I mean, do they really have any effect at this point? I mean, is it really a deterrent? Is Putin sit back and say, oh, my goodness, another sanction? Look out. You know, what am I going to do? Well, it's a, it's a great question. Uh, you know, Vladimir Putin said that the loss of the Soviet empire was the greatest geopolitical ca catastrophe of uh, the, the century. And so he'd like to, to knit Belarus and Ukraine and the Baltics back into to his Russian empire, and, uh, and we've got to stop it. And when you look at sanctions, I'll tell you one sanction that worked and it was the Nord Stream 2 pipeline sanctions. In the Trump administration, we stopped Nord Stream 2 in its tracks. It couldn't be completed. They couldn't get it, get it through the Denmark, uh, uh, Denmark's waters and uh, EEZ. Uh, they couldn't complete the pipeline. And unfortunately, we gave them, uh, since President Biden took office, we gave them the Nord Stream pipeline uh, and got nothing in return. We didn't get security guarantees for Ukraine. We didn't get anything else in return. So, so the sanctions that could be effective, uh, we haven't taken. So uh, I, I don't think Putin's concerned about ineffective sanctions, uh, uh, listing an oligarch uh, under OFAC or something of that nature. But he, he, he was concerned about Nord Stream, too. And there are other things, other yeah. uh, you know, steps that we can take if he did move on Ukraine, like uh, cutting Russia off from the international banking system. Yeah, why Biden, early in his presidency, gave the Nord Stream pipeline back to Russia for absolutely nothing, as you pointed out, is one of the great mysteries. Uh, guys never negotiated anything, and that's what you that's what you get. And now we're in a tough spot. We don't have that to, as a card to play. So, Ambassador O'Brien, uh, Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Hannity. We do appreciate it.